Okay, this looks good. Um, uh, so, uh, so um, thanks for <laughs> the organizers for inviting me. Um, so, uh, so I was I was actually going to talk uh, talk about teaching R to physicians today, but I think I have something uh, a little bit more interesting for this audience, um, and that's work that's been going on in uh, for, for just a few weeks in my group, um, and it's to solve a particularly annoying pain point. Uh, that we've encountered when working with complex uh, red cap databases. And let me see if I can get rid of this thing. Um, so uh, the, uh, the title of my talk is Red Cap TidyR, um, Extracting Red Cap Databases into Tidy Tibbles. Um, so uh, uh, just to give you a little bit of background, uh, I work at CHOP, the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, um, and I lead a group uh, that's called Cell and Gene Therapy Data Ops, so CGT Data Ops. And uh, what's CG CGT Data Ops is a data science team that's embedded in the cell therapy and transplant section of the Division of Oncology. So I'm, I'm a physician by training. I see patients, but I also run the small data science team. And, um, and one key goal that CGT Data Ops is trying to solve, uh, so we've existed for about a year and a half now, um, and one of our key goals is digital transformation of how we run, uh, how we run uh, clinical trials in which patients receive cell therapy products such as bone marrow transplants and CAR T cells, um, and specifically investigator-initiated cell therapy trials. So those that don't have a huge, huge and uh, uh, a hugely, um, um, uh, you know, well-funded sponsor. And we have fifteen. Uh, we have more than fifteen active trials like this going on. And so, so here's the problem. Here's the state of affairs when I started CGT Data Ops a year and a half ago. So we have our um, when we when we when we write up our trials and do papers, uh, we have our data sources. Um, so, so we use Epic as our electronic health record, and then we'll have protocol forms and other documents that the FDA requires us to put together. And usually, uh, these these exist as PDFs. They each are uh, exist on a computer, and this is then uh, printed out and gets put into these physical binders. And we have hundreds of them. Um, uh, because we have hundreds of patients, and each one, this, this is this is this is exactly what one of these painters looks like. And then this, um, uh, then for writing a, up a paper, when it's time to write up a paper, uh, these would then get uh, manually re-entered and usually into Excel sheets. And then uh, the final data analysis would happen using an R script. Or I'm just kidding. This usually happens in Excel. So uh, so this is uh, this is kind of what the state of affair was. Um, a year and a half ago, and 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 here here was my proposal at the time. Um, so we wanted to really uh, move away from physical binders towards uh, towards uh, you know something like Dropbox uh, to have uh, to have everything as PDFs in there. Then use RedCap uh, as our standard uh, electronic data capture system, and um, and then um, uh, then monitor both operations for those clinical trials and outcomes in custom built uh, our shiny dashboards. And uh, so operations monitoring would be stuff like, um, uh, you know, how many people are on the trial, you know, what's our enrollment, what's our accrual, uh, who's coming up, uh, what's, are, are there data missing that should have been entered. And outcomes monitoring is stuff like, you know, what's, what's our response rate, what are, you know, what's, what's our, um, uh, like, Kaplan-Meier curves, swimmer plus, those kinds of things. And um, and importantly, so I wanted to give a shout out to Paul Harris's talk the other day. Uh, so we have implemented CDIS. So we've we've made a, a huge amount of progress towards this goal. Um, uh, we've implemented CDIS. We've implemented uh, a really nice uh, standardized way to that we build red cap databases, complex red cap databases with longitudinal structures. And um, uh, but then a huge pain point that we've encountered. Um, uh, it, uh, it was uh, in, in actually downloading a complex database into R for dashboarding. I'm going to show you what I mean. Um, so in this talk, I'm going to briefly talk about just as a brief outline. So what is RedCap? What is RedCap R? And why RedCap tidy R? Um, so RedCap, for those of you who don't know, uh, which I think is the minority probably, is a database solution that's uh, meant to support uh, research, but can also be used for clinical operations. Uh, and is used widely for clinical operations at places like CHOP. It's secure and accessible from a web browser. Um, and, 
and can collect uh, any type of data in any environment. This is how they build themselves. And it's probably installed at your institution. They probably allow you to store PHI and set up your own databases. So it's, it's very widely used. And it's uh, for everybody who is a member of the REDCap consortium, which is a lot and a lot of institutions, you can use it for free. Um, so uh, what is REDCap R? REDCap R is, the, uh, is one of uh, the R packages that, uh, that exist for interacting with REDCap. It's, it's probably the one that's maintained the best. Um, and uh, you know, the, 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 the meat, uh, the, the biggest, uh, the, the most important piece of REDCap R is a set of functions that wrap the REDCap API. So REDCap comes with an API that allows you to programmatically download data uh, from REDCap. Uh, uh, and what you have to uh, using an API token. And uh, so REDCap R has, has functions such as REDCap read, REDCap metadata read, or REDCap write to, uh, to interact um, uh, with, the, uh, with the REDCap API. And, and one thing I want to point out here, it's extremely well engineered. There's a ton of unit tests. There's a lot of assertions. It's been around for 10 years. It's, it's, it's well tested. It's well maintained. Uh, so we love Red Cap R. Um, so to 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 as a motivating problem for Red Cap Tidy R, uh, I could show you a data set with demographics and medications, but we've seen a lot of these I think over the past two days. So I thought it's more fun to look at this data set, which has information about 736 superheroes. So that's the superheroes database. You can go to this URL here, uh, and uh, and there's there's really two tables in the superheroes database. So we built a Red Cap database containing the superheroes data has two tables. One is heroes underscore information. And um, this is um, this is a, 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 an instrument that captures demographics of your superheroes, like what's their eye color, what's their hair color, which universe are they in? Are they in the Marvel universe or DC? Actually, I don't know anything about superheroes, but th those, those kinds of things. And so this is what's considered a regular instrument. Uh, means like one, uh, one superhero per record. Um, uh, and then uh, there's a second instrument, superhero powers. And this is what's called a repeating instrument. So uh, any superhero can have zero, one, or multiple superpowers. And, uh, and this is what this looks like in red cap. So you have, uh, so here you have the first six records from, uh, from, this, uh, from the superheroes database. So our first record is A-bomb and, uh, and we have um, the hero's information um, uh, instrument. And you can see that there's this one uh, kind of, I don't know, circle um, showing that there's, there's, there's exactly one instrument filled out with information about this specific record. And then Superhero Powers has multiple of these, and you can add additional ones. And here, there's just one, and here's multiple. And if I click on, um, on Abomination, I can see that uh, Abomination has eight superpowers. And if I click on this button here, I could see more. But this is, so, 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 so we just want to drive home regular instruments repeated instruments is something that REDCap supports. And this is very useful for medical data because you might have uh, you might have the demographics of a patient and then they might have multiple medications. So there's these forms that you want to fill in repeatedly even in a specific single record. So, so here is what it looks like when, uh, when you're trying to use REDCap R to, uh, to download um, this data set into R. So uh, what we have here is superheroes gets red cap R, red cap read one shot. So that's a, a version of the red cap read function. And it has a very, very simple URL, uh, it has very simple API. You just give it your red cap, um, uh, the, the uh, uniform resource indicator or URI and the API token. And then actually what it spits out is a list um, of, of data elements with, with return messages. But then, uh, but then you have this data element, which is a data frame with all of the data that comes out. So everything comes out as a big table. And here's what this big table looks like for our, uh, for our um, superheroes data set. Okay, so what the hell? What are, where do all these NAs come from? And if we look at the size of the, the dimensions of this table, okay, I, talk, I said earlier that there's 736. Why are there 6,700 row in this thing? And why do I have 16 columns? So most of the data is NAs. Um, and uh, but this is what uh, this is this is this is what uh, what's called the sparse matrix. So welcome to the matrix. Uh, the sparse matrix is what um, what the Redcap API and therefore Redcap R returns when you have a mix of repeated and not repeated instruments. So it's unwieldy. It's huge. 
Um, there is, uh, it's very confusing uh, what the meaning of NAs are. The, you know, uh, our, our, our database is actually fully uh, entered with values. There's, there shouldn't be any, uh, there, there aren't, uh, every NA here um, uh, in this case means that uh, it's an artifact of, of how that table gets put together. Um, there's important metadata missing. If you take this data uh, matrix, you don't know uh, which fields come from which instrument, except for those that come from repeating instruments. And, um, and this is important. The, so this is very confusing. Um, the meaning of a row in the data set is not consistent because uh, for rows that actually come from the, um, that represent information from, so this first two year row here represents information coming from the, uh, the first instrument, which is a regular instrument. Uh, uh, we actually have one uh, row uh, meaning one uh, record. Um, that's not the case uh, for for these other rows here, which uh, in which one row um, represents um, not one record but one record repeat. Okay, so you have a mix of different granularities in the same table. So that is not tidy. That is that that uh, that contradicts the, or that is inconsistent with the definition of uh, of tidy. So, uh, so this is this is the problem that we're trying to solve is is having to deal with this sparse matrix, and um, and so uh, so Redcap tidy R, uh, we we named it so that it, as as to to um, uh, uh, by by kind of squeezing this 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 tidy idea in between Redcap and R to really highlight this is really something that's built on top of Redcap R, which we're huge fans of, um, and the main function uh, which is. Uh, Read Redcap Tidy has a similar API as uh, uh, Redcap or Redcap Read or Redcap Read One Shot, which is what you usually use. So it really, just requires a Redcap URL and API token. And what it does is that it returns a set of tidy tibbles. And the big idea here is that you're going to get one tibble for each Redcap instrument. So let's look at what this looks like. Um, so here. Um, uh, we're gonna we're gonna load uh, uh, the library redcap redcap tidy r. Uh, we're gonna load um, um, uh, uh, super uh, super. We're gonna uh, put the output of the red read redcap tidy uh, um, function into superheroes tidy. It doesn't return a list, so I don't have to do this dollar data awkward thing at the end of this. And then if I if I then look at this uh, look at this superheroes tidy object, I can see it's a tibble. So I get a tibble. And this tibble has two rows. Um, and uh, you can see that the first, um, the first uh, column says red cap form name. So this is the name of, uh, of, of the instrument. The second column is red cap data. And this is a list column um, that contains uh, the tidy tibbles that we were talking about. And here you can see that, um, that, that one, is, uh, one has a lot of uh, 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 rows and not a lot of columns, and one has much, much fewer uh, rows and more columns. So corresponding to heroes information, superheroes parts. It also tells me what the structure is, repeating and non-repeating. Okay, so, um, so, uh, so, 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 so here's, 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 uh, here's the idea behind the red cap super, what, we, what we've called the red cap tidier super table. So you get one row for each instrument, um, and you get a list column with tibbles that contain the actual data. And then I'm going to make the claim that these tibbles that are in there look exactly what you expect them to look like. Okay, I realize it's a bold statement, but, uh, but, uh, but, but let's look at these two uh, example uh, uh, instruments, the outputs from those two example instruments we looked at, the superheroes. Um, so, uh, so you get, um, you start with a, um, a, a key column and check how much time I have for this. Um, uh, and uh, OK, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, so you start with a key column, which is your record ID, right? So if this is uh, we're familiar with this. Every, if you've ever looked at a classic or regular database without repeat instruments, that's what this looked like. Then um, we have uh, data. Uh, and it's not sparse anymore. There's no uh, random NAs in here anymore. And then we have at the very last column um, uh, a, a indicator column whether the form status is complete. 
Okay. So this is going to be the structure of each tidy tibble that comes out of red cap tidy R. Uh, we're going to start with a key, then we'll have the data, and then we'll have form status complete at the end. Um, so let's look at the repeated instrument. Um, here we have record ID and red cap repeat instance. And together, what they'll form is a composite key. So together, these two columns will, will allow me to uniquely identify. And if I wanted to use, uh, uniquely identify a row, and if I wanted to use that key to join multiple tables that I get from the project back together. So we have a composite key. We have one uh, column with the data that we're interested in, and we have form status complete. OK, um, so what about longitudinal projects? So longitudinal projects is something that REDCap supports uh, when you uh, uh, don't just want to uh, repeat instruments on demand, but if you want to create a structure in your project where uh, you'll fill out one instrument at, pre at predefined intervals. Um, for example, you could have uh, a physical exam that you fill out uh, once at each, um, at each visit, and you'll have a pre-treatment visit, you have an infusion visit, and then you have your uh, day, day, day 7, day 28, one month, two month, three month follow-up uh, visits. Um, so, uh, so, so how do we handle these? The idea is that, again, one instrument is one tidy tibble. So if that instrument shows up in multiple events, it'll still be just one instrument that you'll have uh, in your output. And the, um, the second key idea is that your composite key that uh, RedCap Tidier makes up for you will depend on, uh, uh, on the instrument structure and the project structure. So we already just saw that in a classic instrument, um, uh, which is what the superheroes data set is. It's not longitudinal, it's classic. Um, we have uh, the record ID is our key, is our composite key, so it only has one column. And in a repeated instrument, we'll have record ID plus red cap repeat instance. Now, this idea um, actually extends very nicely to longitudinal one arm and longitudinal multi arm um, uh, uh, kinds of projects. So we'll just have uh, uh, additional. Uh, uh, partial key columns, red cap event and red cap arm. Um, and what this allows you to do is, even though you're going to get a bunch of tibbles back that you may want to link back together, uh, you, because you'll have this composite key, it's going to be very easy to join these tibbles back together in any way that you want. Um, but at the same time, um, one instrument oftentimes for a lot of analytic tasks contains the data that you want to actually put together into an analytic object. And it's a, it's a, it really reduces your cognitive load of, uh, of how many things you have to deal with at the same time. So um, now one thing that I glossed over a little bit is, is um, like how do you now, now if you're going to get a list with all of these instruments, um, uh, how do you extract your data frames out of uh, how, how do you extract these tibbles out of that super tibble object and, and actually work with them? So that's something I glossed over a little bit because you're going to actually have to do some subsetting and some extracting and some uh, some uh, single bracket, double bracket kind of action. But we've we've provided a helper function for this, and and this 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 the helper function that we have here is called bind tables. And uh, what it does is it takes a red cap tidier super tibble object and magically makes the tibbles, uh, uh, the tibbles inside of it appear in your environment. So if I fake uh, click on this, um, on this play button here, notice the environment is empty right now. And remember we had two, uh, two tables in this, in, in, this, in this object. Now you would have these two tables appear in the environment. So behind the scenes, this works, works with Arlang, a env underscore poke uh, to, uh, to inject, these, um, to inject these, uh, these tables into your environment. And you can actually also give it a different environment uh, uh, object uh, if you want to use something for shiny applications with the uh, strategy to PTR, which is one thing that you know, we like to use. Um, uh, uh, we, we like to use environments uh, in, a, in shiny applications. You can do that as well. But this makes it really easy for an analyst if you have a database with like lots of with lots of tables to immediately have them in a place where you can start to work with them. 
So, uh, so I want to invite everybody to try this for yourselves. Uh, I'm going to post this link in the chat, and um, and um, uh, and but I do want to warn you that this is still very alpha. Um, but I think we're now at a point where we where we're ready to have its like, tires kicked by the community. So, so I really like um, to hear uh, what happens when you try to. It load. Uh, I want to want to hear all the errors that you get when you try to load your own databases with this and tell what fails. Um, again, we, we're not you. We, we we don't use any um, any. Uh, it, this is this is purely a, a, a functionality to read packages. We're not writing anything, so uh, so it's not going to be non-destructive. But I really like to hear feedback, and I realize I'm out in time. Um, so future work, uh, what we're what we're gonna try to do next is to uh, actually support and actually default to labels instead of raw data for categorical fields. Create some helper functions to extract individual tables into named objects. So you don't, if you don't like the bind tables uh, kind of magic, uh, uh, non-pure function uh, a business. Um, Want to uh, be able to to pull metadata and also gracefully deal with incomplete data sets, which is currently a bug. So uh, thank you very much, and uh, I'm happy to take a question if there's uh, if there's time.